When I was a young lad in the productivity app community, I found a man named Thomas Frank. By many, he was considered to be Captain America, the Captain America of the productivity app community. So I decided to make a video where I roast his morning routine because why not? Boom, roasted. I'm the Grinch of productivity. Grinch versus Captain America, let's go. One of the most important lessons that I've learned about productivity is that the way you start your day really matters. Waking up on time and going through a sequence of healthy habits can give you the momentum that you need to roll right into your work. While waking up late or waking up without a plan can easily lead to procrastination and wasted time. So fundamentally, this is really true. There are a lot of people who do not believe in like, oh, I need to have a plan. I need to start my morning. Um, while there is, you know, a limiting belief in saying like you have to have it start right in order for you to be productive, there is also some science to back this called positive momentum, where, I mean, this is also an economical term used often, but if you are starting your day off with something that goes well, for example, if you convince yourself to wake up early in the morning, that's one win. And then generally speaking, psychologically, you're going to have a positive impact on your mind and you're going to keep that day moving forward with that good thing. If you, on the other hand, have a late wake up time, you might subconsciously start thinking to yourself that you kind of sucked for the day. And for me, this is actually getting really hard as my morning wake up is considered to be like 4.30. And if I wake up at five, I get annoyed at myself. And that's a little bit of a problem I have, but you know, I'm a little psychotic. Today, I want to share the morning routine that I've been using recently. It's pretty simple, but it does involve one pretty big change from the way that I used to do things. Though we're gonna get to that later because, well, first things first, I just have to get out of bed. And these days I'm waking up at about 6.30 in the morning, and I do this using a pretty- Lightweight 6.30, that's cake simple trick. So if you saw my video that I put out a few years ago about how I used to force myself to get up early, I actually used to use a social media scheduler to schedule a tweet that would go out and tell people that I was being lazy. So to prevent this from going out, I would have to get up before the tweet's scheduled time, turn my computer on and either move it to the next day or delete it. See, this is a problem. There are a lot of people who need social pressure and I am one of those people as well, but it can be a little excessive to call yourself lazy if you're you know, waking up at seven instead of 6.30. Really long time, this was an incredibly effective way to get up at the time I wanted to get up and to go through my morning routine. But when I tried to use it again earlier this year, I found that it no longer works for me because it led to me actually waking up in the middle of the night, worrying that I had slept through my alarm or that something else had gone wrong and the tweet had gone out. So this method was literally giving me anxiety and negatively affecting the quality of my sleep. So what I'm doing now is a lot simpler, but it's just as effective. I just have a second alarm on an iPad downstairs so I have to actually go downstairs from my room and turn it off. And that alarm is set for about five minutes after my main one, which virtually guarantees that I'm never going to hit snooze and I'm always going to go downstairs and get both alarms turned off and then get into my routine. This is a really good idea from him because there are so many different ways that you can force yourself to get up. But he did one that was not stressing him out anymore. And I actually have a lot of the same issues where I'm like, Oh, did I not wake up on time? And that's a little bit of subconscious pressure because I've verbally said on the internet all the time that I am somebody who wakes up at somewhere between 4 and 5 a.m. every day. So when I don't, I'm like, well, yeah. What if I started doing that tweet from Thomas Frank? And then seeing this, I definitely believe that I would not want to do that because increasing the cortisol levels you have right when you wake up is Probably not the best idea, especially since I have coffee right away, which does that as well. So don't, don't stress yourself out with tweets. Feed my cat, I water my plants, and I do some pull-ups. I'm trying to gradually increase the number that I do in the morning, but right now I'm doing just about 10. And this is a good way to actually make sure I feel fully awake, but it's also just another good way to make sure that I stay in shape for rock climbing. And quick tip if you're gonna use one of these door frame pull-up bars, when you get one, take an old towel and wrap it around the contact points with either a rubber band or some tape. That way it doesn't damage your door frame because these things can definitely do that if you don't uh, pad out those contacts. Uh, I definitely need to do that every morning. I take a little bit of a base workout with doing 3,000 push-ups and then, no, I do like 50 push-ups when I wake up. And then uh, the, the, the thing about the door frame one, I, thanks for that context. Some of us really need to know those things. Attack points. So once I've done those pull-ups, I will go outside for about a 10 to 15 minute walk. And this is really casual. I'm not power walking. I'm not out there jogging. I'm just going to get a walk because this was a habit that I used to do every single morning after I graduated from college and I was living back in Iowa. And I really just wanted to add it back in. I don't know how he managed to do that in Iowa because I was not exactly warm. But for me in Chicago, there is no way I'm getting up and walking right away. I used to run 70 mile weeks in that kind of cold and Lord knows I don't ever want to do that again. My knees, my knees are like dogs. They, they know 
the cold is coming or a storm is coming. And while I'm walking, I'll usually listen to a podcast or an audiobook. Uh, right now I'm listening to Wondery's excellent Business Wars podcast, specifically the Biker Wars series about Harley Davidson, along with Children of Ruin by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And both of these I highly recommend, though with Tchaikovsky, you're probably gonna wanna start with Children of Time. Which okay, this is awesome that he's doing these things, but let me just point one thing out. I know he's skipping on some productivity somewhere in his morning because uh, right now I'm listening He's got Pokemon Go on his dang phone. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I see Pokemon Go. I see Evernote. I see Strava. Cool. I see Habitica. I see Notion. I see Slack. But the Pokemon Go, man, that's going to ruin your entire morning routine. Once I'm back from the walk, it is time for breakfast. But before I get to cooking, I first activate a little routine that I created on my Echo speaker. Ooh. Like, start my morning. Today, there are two events remaining. At 2 p.m. there's podcast interview with The Rock and at 3 p.m. there's callback to brag. <laughs> that was a subtle reference to Matt Diavella loving The Rock and the fact that Thomas Frank interviewed him in this video. Thomas has a little bit of humor in his videos. I appreciate that. But this is cool, having a little automated morning. I use iPhone shortcuts to get my morning started with like the Daily Stoic and checking the weather and seeing what meetings I have for the day. So very smart on him. Made a video all about a couple of months ago and you can check that out in case you're interested. But recently I've just been sticking to a very simple wrap. Eggs, cheese, bacon, and salsa. And I'll also slice up an apple and of course make coffee. And funny little side note about that coffee. Ooh, oh man, you, you know, grinding coffee beans and videos gets me going. Coffee. A few months ago, I actually decided to do a blind taste test, pitting the craft roasted expensive beans at my local grocery store with regular old caribou coffee dark roast beans. And when I did that, I was surprised to find that I actually liked the caribou beans better, which was interesting because they were literally half the price. Caribou coffee is the most underrated coffee chain in the United States. So doing that test actually showed me that it's a good idea to do these kinds of tests on a regular basis to make sure that you're making logical choices instead of just following mere signifiers of quality like price. After breakfast, it is time to do some learning, which usually takes the form of reading, though I don't always just read books. Sometimes I do, but other times I'll dig into a really long article. For example, one that I read recently was Ray Dalio's new article on paradigm shifts, which I found pretty difficult to read personally, but it actually led to me making some changes in the way that I'm investing my money. So I'll have that link in the description down below as well for anyone who's interested. I do think it is a pretty good read. Okay, so first and foremost, I gotta say one thing. For me, at least, this productivity routine is already too long. He has gotten up, walked, read, cooked, and now he's about to shower. I don't really, I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on the guy. I just think I actually deal with that more Alex Ramosi style of like, just get up and work out and then work on stuff or just get up and work on stuff. I don't think having this like reading, meditation, audiobook, this walk, maybe the walk to get the vitamin D in there is nice, um, but I personally think you're gonna be more productive if you just get up and get to work. That's my opinion on that. Okay, once that's done, it is time to shower. And in my bathroom, I actually keep a small Bluetooth speaker and I use my showering time as time for vocal practice. About a year ago, I started actual vocal lessons and I found that singing in the shower is actually a great way to get some real daily practice in. And in addition to that, I've also created several different playlists on Spotify that each target a specific type of practice in singing, like high range training, low range, Mad respect to this guy. Maybe we should have a productivity community band. You know, I'd, I'd be the bass, but ooh, he's got High Hopes by Panic! The Disco on there. All right, all right, Thomas, take back everything negative I said about your morning routine. Top tier stuff. Anything with Brendan here, that, uh, that and coffee. You gotta watch yourself on this video training, etc. So it's really easy to build up a cue and get about 20 minutes of real deliberate practice in. And this is a great compliment to the more uh, lengthy sessions I do when I have time and the actual lessons as well. And that's it. When I'm done with all of this, I'll usually start work at home, or if I'm doing writing or research, I'll usually head out to a coffee shop to do it there. Now, one thing that you might have noticed is missing from this morning routine is working out or going to the gym. And that's actually the big change that I alluded to earlier. After stubbornly telling myself that I needed to work out in the mornings for a really long time, I've learned through experimentation that it's actually better for me to work out in the afternoons. This is actually a very good thing to realize for yourself and as well as scientific I, I take. This is the right way to do it. You should work out in the afternoon because you're actually more primed to get a workout in. And if you are in Thomas Frank's situation where you don't have a day job, right? And you can just stop working at your solo entrepreneur sort of thing. It is better to get it done later because you're gonna be less cognitively focused, but you're gonna be actually more physically primed to work out. As a former Division One college athlete, when we had morning practice, I would do much better than other teammates uh, for, in comparison with my skill set. 
on the morning practice days because I would wake up at four or five. But for them, they had just woken up and trust me, they're just gonna perform worse, which there's this like common misconception when it comes to training. Uh, there's various examples, but like ankle weights or you know weighted vests, these kinds of things people think, oh yeah, that'll help you do better. No. Generally speaking, you being able to work out at a higher and more focused and effective level, and that includes like just getting better weight pushed or getting runs better in, rather than having something weighing you down like being groggy, you're gonna see better gains in performance, whether it be running or weightlifting wise. And since you're cognitively more able to get good work done in the morning before decision fatigue sets in and you have like kind of cranked out all the deep work you can, it's actually better to get workouts in, af in the afternoon too. Cause if you're one of those people like me who has asthma and gets tired after they work out or do hard cardio sessions, this also factors in as well. So I'm glad he was very focused on himself and realized that's the best way to go for him. This is a pretty big improvement to my routine for a few key reasons. Number one, I just get to work earlier because I'm not going to the gym for an hour or 90 minutes beforehand. Number two, and this is actually more important, this neatly solves the problem of the afternoon slump. Now, I don't know if you get this, but personally, when it gets around three or 4 p.m. in the afternoon, I usually get like this wave of brain fog and it becomes hard to focus. And in the mornings, I don't have this problem. I'm alert, I'm easily able to do my work, but again, when it gets to late afternoon, that ability really starts to diminish. So by going to the gym in the afternoon, I'm able to use more of my morning on work, and then going to the gym is actually a great way to get rid of that brain fog. Dang, that, is he just gonna keep flexing with his free climbing? This is amazing, Thomas because I'm getting some exercise. Finally, number three, I am much more consistent about putting in that learning time in the mornings. When I was working out in the mornings, I would often feel pressure to get right to work after I got back from the gym. And okay, so I appreciate what he said here. In the morning, he replaced that workout with the learning times. I do think there's important. it's important to have time for learning and focus. However, I will, I will say that in my opinion, and this is my preference, I would rather utilize multiple resource theory and learn things while I'm working out or learn things while I'm cleaning rather than learning things just by themselves. That's my opinion. I would rather do that or learn in the time frame that I would have been entertained in the afternoon because sometimes it's better to just like learn and read or listen to an audiobook while you're chilling at night before you go to bed rather than watching a TV show because if you're capturing that information, in your brain before you go to bed. It's There's actually been some studies to show that that ends up sitting better in your brain. So he's kind of putting it in the morning and I appreciate that, but he may find better use of that at night, but also I'm single and he's not. So I'm guessing his lady friend maybe doesn't want to listen to an audiobook while they're chilling after work. And I've learned from personal experience that I'm much less likely to read during the evenings. And I mention this because even though it's easy to skip since it doesn't seem urgent, I think having this habit of reading or learning every single day is incredibly important. For me, doing this keeps me from stagnating since I'm no longer in school, no longer being forced to learn new things by teachers and professors, but it also often leads me to making connections and getting ideas that I wouldn't have otherwise had. And a lot of times this improves the quality of my work and helps me grow my business. This is so true. Mad respect to Thomas Frank for this entire video and morning routine and business. If you learn, you're gonna improve your income. You're gonna be able to create more content if you're someone like me. And I really respect him as a person and as a content creator. So for any of the jokes that I made, take it with a grain of salt, Grinch productivity, as you know. But Thomas, congrats to you for a great business and good luck to you in the next year. And good luck to me for all the people who might click on this video. It'll improve your productivity.